because we were shooting with no, we were going to um, composite this with no motion or render this with no motion blur, um, we had to, if we had a character moving um, quickly across the screen, uh, and I have one here, uh, here we go, right, if we have a character moving quickly across the screen, I'm presuming when, I mean, I'll just give a quick demo of motion blur, uh, we, <laughs> you can see there, I'm, I'm sure you're all familiar with what happens, if you went through what I'm doing now frame by frame, you'd see a pose here, and the next frame is just a blur and he's gone. Uh, and and we, we racked our brains about how we we're going to um, replicate this um, without any assistance from the renderer. So uh, we tried a few things. We tried like actually uh, sketching in 2D, like trying to do a dry brush blur um, uh, over the top of our work. And in the end we hit on just um, Dragging a few bricks behind the character, basically, to to represent what what would have been a motion blur. Uh, so, and uh, well, that's one of the things um, that we end up doing. Um, uh, but we also um, we do things like stretch the character out over. I should have done this before. Have more Lego characters here. Um, We'd actually, if if a character was was you know needing to cover a, a long a, a, a great distance between poses between silhouettes, um, we do stuff like stretch them out across that to cover that distance. Uh, I think I've got an example here. And then uh, the next sketch, the next little clip there, Unikitty blur. Has some uh, has some really nice work that Christelle did as she jumps away from us at the start of the of the clip. She stretched right out to cover the frames that would normally be you know, covered by a motion blur, um, and that was something you know the animators were allowed a lot of freedom with with doing that sort of thing, adding bricks to their to their shot as they needed. Uh, obviously, um, the whole movie shot in very low depth of field, and, and that's more of a, it was a choice with the camera from from the cinematographer Pablo, um, and you know the, the idea was to replicate exactly what it would look like if you had a miniature tabletop set up and you dropped a camera in on it, and um, and it would be you know depth of field would be obvious would be that shallow they're very small, I mean it really helped us. Uh, in is what what we first when we started first seeing renders we had a lot of trouble with the you know keeping the foreground keeping the characters visually separate from the background because the backgrounds were so complex and detailed being made of Lego themselves um, uh, and the foreground characters were were you know also made of Lego so we, when they were still they tended to blend together and the depth of field really helped us with that. Um, we had a little button to show us the, uh, the the actual depth of field or a rough approximation of it uh, in our XSI um, scene files. So so we were able to incorporate into our performance the, the, the idea of depth of field. We could keep characters back in the mist uh, if we needed to and bring them forward to to uh, you know when they're delivering their lines. Um, so it became another kind of storytelling tool, which is very useful. Um, one of the things that we wanted to try on the film too was to try and um, uh, di differentiate the animation styles between the different characters, and that's that's probably most obvious with characters like uh, the difference between, well, particularly Batman. And, and early on, we did um, uh, Matt Walsh did a terrific Batman test where. <laughs> He was chasing him down an alleyway, um, and you know it, we we tried to think of like how, how how would Batman move? He's a kind of cloak and dagger guy, you know. He's got a cape, so you know Matt hit on the idea of like having mm -hmm. him zip around the place, and and this kind of this is one of the times when we did kind of we bend 
bent the rules a little bit on, you know, what uh, on being pure, a pure stop motion -y, um aesthetic, because we 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 you know there were frames in that test where, and you'll see it when Batman fights, um, uh, you know, fights bad cop in the in the canyons in the Wild West. Uh, there's some frames where Batman is just a head and a, and a kind of billowing cape as, as a blur. So, um, you know, Matt hit on the style of him going from a pose like this, zipping into another pose, delivering a line, zipping into another pose, like holding his cape up in front of him, and that really helped define the, the character and differentiate him from, you know, the, the other heroes. And, uh, and Vitruvius too, say, you know, we, we always thought of him, he was a bit old and crotchety, a bit bumbly, so a lot of the animators took that to heart and, and animated him in a, in a kind of rougher way um, with, with bigger spacing between, uh, between poses um, and, and less finesse. If you look at this, this clip here, uh, beards moving around there. Um, there is yet one hope. <laughs> uh, that was, you know, that was a conscious choice that uh, that he could be um, uh, a lot rougher in his style. Um, we actually, uh, Chris McKay, the animation director, um, took us all to the movies to see Wreck It Ralph in the early days of production, um, and and seeing the little eight bit characters popping around there in that in that show. Uh, Gave everyone a lot of confidence that you could um, you could mix animation styles uh, within one movie. Uh, you could differentiate the characters in that way, and also like it's okay to have something that looks um, poppy. Uh, it, it, every you know, the audiences aren't going to run screaming from the room if all your animation and in, in in the show isn't all beautiful and smooth and, and, and beautiful arcs um, and I think that was an important takeaway from 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 Wreck It Ralph because uh, it was you know quite a successful movie and it was very enjoyable um, uh, and you know and that style served those characters and it served the story so um, we tried to work some of that into a, into our show as well <laughs>